a celebration of history and culture. It's a language of light. Let's celebrate. And all the things that make our community beautiful. The epicenter of downtown Sacramento is extraordinary. Tonight, Fox 40 is covering local news that matters, highlighting our Hispanic heritage and those in the community helping to shape the future. The American dream is alive and well. Fox 40 celebrates Hispanic Heritage Month. Now, a special presentation. Fox 40, honoring Hispanic heritage. Presented by California Ford Dealers, California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, and Jacoby and Myers. Good evening, buenas noches, I'm Monica de Anda. Welcome to this special celebration of the rich and long-standing history and culture of Northern California's Hispanic community. Throughout the program, we'll highlight the people and institutions in Sacramento and across the state that help shape our vibrant communities. We begin in Stockton, where a group of high schoolers are breathing fresh life into mariachi. The art form dates back to the 1700s in Mexico and is now inspiring students here to pursue the arts. Inside this classroom, Fingers move with precision. The sound coming from these young musicians. One, two, three. Welcome to Cesar Chavez High School's Advanced Mariachi class. The only reason I came to the school was because of music, due to the music program that they had here. The opportunity to join Mariachi Chavez and learn from Mariachi director Luis Tito Talamantes is one these students dreamed of. He challenges you a lot and he pushes you to your limits and it really like, it makes you become better. So check it out, try it. Rebozo. Rebozo. See that? See where it goes? Talamantes first picked up an instrument at age 10 and went on to be a founding member of Mariachi Chavez in 2005. I decided then during my high school years that I was going to be a music teacher. But not before joining the music industry. Talamantes was a professional musician from 2010 to 2014. At the end of that year, he officially took over the Mariachi program at Cesar Chavez High School. I mean, it's pretty wild. Um, to, to think that, you know, I was once a student, now I'm going through the program and I'm, you know, helping kids get through the program. He, like, looks at what you're struggling on and he gives you tips, he gives you, um, like, points of view and he just encourages you. Under Talamantes, Mariachi Chavez has been invited to play at the State Assembly, the Kennedy Center of Performing Arts in Washington, D.C., and even the White House. This on top of performing hundreds of times and even recording a music video. What's even more satisfying, more fulfilling, is that a lot of students that I've had come through the program are now music teachers themselves and teaching mariachi out in the community. Inspiring the next generation of musicians. Okay, take it again. Right where the verso comes in. While encouraging them to embrace mariachi music. It really like allowed me to like connect to my like culture. It feels good. I feel like proud. I'm like wow. Like I didn't. I never imagined that I'd be doing something like this. It's really like like it feels really good. The minute you put an instrument in a child's hand, they are the musician. So it's it's an identity that they a sense of identity that a child gets immediately, and that's something that. I had the opportunity to receive. So I'm passionate about teaching music in general just to perpetuate the opportunities that were given to me through music. Empowering students through music, one note at a time. Our thanks to Cesar Chavez High School in Stockton for sharing their talents with us. And now we want to introduce you to a mariachi band that is captivating audiences while challenging stereotypes. This band is made up of all women. Mariachi Femenil Orgullo Mexicano has been playing for more than a decade. It was founded on the San Francisco State Campus by Ninfa Iglesias and Lilia Chavez. Both came from families of mariachi musicians, and they thought it would be special to put together a band that celebrates women in a music genre largely dominated by men. I can say that every time we perform somewhere and there are little girls present or even young older women when they see that the entire ensemble is all female you can see their eyes brighten up especially the little girls band members say life changes like school work and children means that sometimes they have to take a break from playing but what keeps them coming back is a love of the music and the opportunity to connect with their heritage and we're just getting started here with our celebration of hispanic heritage month when we return we're going from stockton to the stars Ahead. Ahead, we meet a local astronaut whose life story is now a Hollywood hit, how the former farm worker made it to the International Space Station.
Welcome back to Fox 40 celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. I'm Monica de Anda. A Stockton man who made his way from farm worker to astronaut is now the focus of a Hollywood movie that hit number one on Amazon Prime. Dennis Shanahan introduces us to astronaut Jose Hernandez. Invited guests lined up inside the Stockton Regal Theater Tuesday night to watch the premiere of A Million Miles Away. Ma, ¿por qué sirven las estrellas? Every decision I've made, I've made with the space program in mind. It's the story of Jose Hernandez, who grew up working in the fields of the San Joaquin Valley. Tenacity is a superpower. And followed his dream to fly into space as a NASA astronaut. Hernandez is played by award-winning actor Michael Peña. I kid around with him. I said, you know, he's a great actor, but he does, he's not as good looking as I am, so. The astronaut was very down to earth, visiting with Fox 40 at the hometown premiere. I think it's a story of uh, perseverance. It's a story of uh, hard work, of uh, education being the great equalizer, of the concept that the American dream is alive and well, if you're willing to work hard, persevere, and, uh, and prepare yourself according to the challenge you select. He says the feeling of looking down on earth is surreal and humbling as you realize you're one of only about 500 people to have that experience, and yet he is still rooted in Stockton. My office is in a waterfront warehouse, and uh, it's just a couple blocks away. I could have walked here. Uh, for the premier. His story is a story of perseverance. Stockton Mayor Kevin Lincoln expressed thanks that Hernandez wanted to share this movie with the hometown audience first. You know, Stockton is a beautiful place that produces a lot of talent, but Stockton is also a place where uh, people who are from this community, they want to give back. Before the screening, Amazon presented Hernandez with a $10,000 check for his nonprofit, Reaching much. for the Stars. Uh, we'll, Through that organization, this, Hernandez yeah, encourages young people to pursue yeah. careers in science, technology, engineering, and math. I've been on the verge of giving up after each and every rejection, but you know what, sir? Here I am. So you could turn me down again, but rest assured, I'll be standing here again in a year. Work hard and never, ever give up. Our thanks to Dennis for that profile. Hispanic Heritage Month celebrates cultures from across the diaspora, and now we want to bring you a taste of Peru. Immigrants embark on long journeys to build new lives here in America, but it's the steps they take today that help them get into a good rhythm and carry on tradition wherever they go. Megan Healy is in San Diego to give us a lesson on Peruvian dancing. With every step and every beat. Every time that you hear something like is your heart beating, you know, okay, where is coming? The music ignites a fire <laughs> in Peruvians around the world, especially for president of the House of Peru, Claudia Newkirk. I have two kids and it's very important for me to promote the same love to our culture with, with both of them, especially those are two boys, but they know every time, okay, they listen to the music and say, okay, mom is ready to dance, so yeah. <laughs> Eager to share her passion for Peru with San Diego, Claudia teamed up with dancer Connie Tenorio to form the house's first dance group. I can start teaching. I'm not a teacher, but I dance. So I started doing it in a parking lot. And then one Peruvian I told another Peruvian and tell another Peruvian. Eventually, I got word of it. Dos, tres, cuatro. So I had to make my Peruvian grandmother proud and give it a whirl. You'll learn a variety of Peruvian dances if you head to one of the lessons. And at the House of Peru, the performance group, also known as Alenco, they've been dancing here in San Diego for nearly three years. But some of these dancers have been dancing since they could learn to walk. Started since kindergarten all the way to high school. And that was something that was part of the curriculum for every child over there to learn Peruvian dances, boy, boys or, and girls. Dances like the Valicha from the mountain town of Cusco. It's kind of like a national anthem for Peruvians, the balicha is, represents the true love. And the festejo, a dance from the coast influenced by African culture when they came to Peru in the 17th century. I love festejo because it's so, you know, full of energy. And full of color from head to toe. 
and the shoes, they are from uh, tires, from the car. So we're trying to be very true to the culture so people know what it is. One, two. These are the ambassadors of our culture, honoring ancestors and teaching future generations the rhythm of Peru. Meeting these beautiful people give me the opportunity to, okay, I'm far away from Peru, but I'm here with, you know, people that they share the same love to our culture. So that's beautiful. Two. Hey. Hey. Our thanks to Megan Healy for showing us her moves. Still ahead tonight, from performing in the family band to striking out on her own, we sit down with up-and-coming reggaeton artist La Doña, learn how a mix of her Chicana heritage and Bay Area roots influence a sound that's drawing in fans. You're watching Fox 40 celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. I'm Monica De Anda. It's been a big year for San Francisco's up and coming reggaeton artist, La Doña. She's going from singing with her family band to taking the main stage at Outside Lands. Sarah Stinson sat down with the singer songwriter to learn how her Chicana heritage mixed with her Bay Area roots influences her music. Cecilia Cassandra Peña Govea is a San Francisco native. She records music under the name La Doña. Her songs are now streamed millions of times on Spotify. But it all started in her Bernal Heights family home with her parents and sister. She grew up playing in the family band La Familia Peña Govea. I was actually born upstairs and um, amongst a lot of family, a lot of parties, a lot of culture and community. Peña Govea was destined for a career in music, but since it consumed her upbringing, she decided to take a break in her late teens. Gave me the space to kind of discover my own interests and to start to find my way back to music. And she found her way back to music in a big way as La Doña. The name stems from a nickname given to her by friends. La Doña means like, usually it refers to like the older lady, like boss of the house, like, or the person at the, who runs the business. She mixes Latin music, cumbia, salsa, all kinds of genres with a Bay Area flair. She even raps. What's special to me is being able to like bring them all together and do it in such a way that like people with my similar backgrounds, Chicanos or Chicanx people, Latinx people, um, and everyone who's kind of had that taste of the Bay Area or of um, the diversity that we feel in California, that they're able to have that connection. La Doña is a family affair. Her father and childhood friends are in the band. She invites her mom and sister up on stage as well. This has been a big year for her as La Doña performed at Outside Lands on the main stage. Playing at Outside Lands was like definitely a dream come true. It was so amazing to be at home and to be on such a big stage like that. La Doña was also featured on President Barack Obama's summer music playlist. But behind all the success success of La Doña is Peña Govea, who says the only recognition she needs is from the community that raised her. To see multiple generations, four generations of San Francisco locals appreciate my music and tell me that they're proud of me and that they're excited by um, my music, that's pretty much all I need. Peña Govea not only works on music for La Doña, but she also teaches music in Oakland as a fellow for the California Arts Commission. Showing them how to connect with their own creativity and find their own voice. La Doña travels the world playing music, but she says one of the strongest Latinx communities she's ever experienced is right here in the Bay Area. Just incredibly blessed with such a rich diversity of music, culture, food, art. It's really special and not something that you see in other places. Oh, yeah. Our thanks to Sarah Stinson for the story. La Doña's latest single is now streaming and the band is working on a full album. When we come back, the effort to make sure Cesar Chavez Plaza here in Sacramento lives up to its namesake. Plus, millions are already familiar with the music and artistry of Carlos Santana. Now, a new film shows us the life lessons the Bay Area legend learned that stretch far beyond the music.
Welcome back. I'm Monica de Anda. Thank you for watching Fox 40 celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. He's a pioneer of Latin rock and truly needs no introduction. A new documentary is giving fans of Carlos Santana an in-depth look at his life and legacy. From launching his career in Northern California to earning more than a dozen Grammys and a spot in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Santana spoke about it all with Noel Bello. Family is first, middle, and last. Family is the most sacred thing in this planet. With an everlasting love, focus, and respect for his familia, Carlos Santana has paved his own way through the music industry since the late 1960s, collecting numerous accolades along the way. There's so much to celebrate. In a new intimate documentary, Carlos, audiences will learn about the man behind the music and the familia he honors with his talent. New interviews, concert footage, and never-before-seen archival footage are blended together with home videos videos recorded by Santana himself. Oh, look at his hands, man. So soft, man. Yeah, yes, soft my father hands. taught me the language that his father taught him, and now I teach my son. It's a language of light and love through sound resonance vibration, which is music. Santana says when his family moved to San Francisco, his father brought the first mariachi band to the city. In the film, the expert composer, arranger, and band leader wants it to be clear the lessons he learned from his family reach far beyond the music. It's wonderful to show uh, people in a light that is not a victim mentality. It's not pobrecito, you know, it's more like, let's celebrate this vato's loose, you know, la luz de este vato, you know. We're able to bring unity, harmony, and oneness to the planet uh, beyond religion or beyond uh, nationalities. Following disparaging comments he made this summer against the transgender community, Santana says he hopes the film will drive home his true feelings about the world around him. Is there anything you'd like to say to your LGBTQ fans or maybe have them keep in mind when deciding whether or not to, to view this documentary about your life and career? It's like drinking water in the desert, you know. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what your beliefs are. I honor it and respect it. No if, no buts. This is about celebrate your choices. This is the planet of free will. Whatever you believe you are, be happy and have fun with it. It's not complicated. San Francisco is where Santana first began fusing rock and Latin music together. He was once caught sneaking into the Fillmore and ran into Bill Graham. I went to the windows and there were these two gentlemen climbing up the side of the building on the drain pipe. One of us said, I play guitar. And... and when I finished, Bill Graham came to me and he says, you're going to open up for The Who, uh, Steve Miller and Howling Wolf. He says the city will always feel like home. If you spend a week in San Francisco, watch out. It gets inside your system. It gets inside your blood. <laughs> not unlike the music he continues to create. For a real artist, musician, to convert fear into joy via sound resonance vibration frequency, we're able to heal, bring esperanza, bring hope, joy, and courage to people. And as we wrap up our celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month, there's an effort underway to breathe new life into one of the oldest parks in California. Cesar Chavez Plaza has been the heart of downtown Sacramento for more than 165 years. Now the city, business, and community leaders are coming together to make sure it's a vibrant meeting spot for decades to come. Right here at Cesar Chavez Plaza is a statue of Cesar Chavez himself a labor leader and civil rights activist who co-founded the National Farm Workers Association, bringing change to the working and living conditions of hundreds of thousands of farm workers. He embodies the Latino spirit of perseverance, que si se puede, and that's a spirit that local leaders want this plaza to radiate. We can't stop forgetting what it stands for, the efforts that were put in by Cesar Chavez and all of his followers. Ernesto Delgado is on a mission to rediscover Cesar Chavez Plaza. The goal is simple. A place that all 
people, all Latinos come together to enjoy Latino culture. Delgado's commitment began almost six years ago when he opened La Cosecha, a restaurant that's helped bring more people to Cesar Chavez Plaza. Efforts strengthened by partnerships with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, private businesses, the downtown Sacramento partnership, and support from City Hall. Reimagining a farmer's market here, now called Bodega Days, brings a variety of vendors from unique backgrounds. Among them, Pamela Marquez, who sells Jamaica, traditional Mexican tea. Business is booming. I have developed a, a following here. And just across the way... I want the people to get to know Peru through the things I sell here, to appreciate its beauty and the amazing work of the artisans who made all this back in Peru. These are the Incan colors. Jesse Flores gives Sacramentans a taste of Peruvian culture. 80% of these products are from Cusco. Bringing my culture to your home, o sea, trayendo mi cultura a tu casa. A fusion of cultures that's helping increase foot traffic. This year we're actually 54% above uh, where we were last year as far as park visitation goes. And that's outperforming the rest of, of downtown. Cesar Chavez Plaza really has been a bright spot. And there's more. These umbrellas, tables, and chairs were purchased through the Smud Shine Award. And now people can come take a seat, drink a cup of coffee, and maybe even make a new friend. You can also find book racks, ping pong tables, long games, and an imagination playground for kids. And it doesn't stop there. We're doing all this free family activation. Every Wednesday at 6 p.m., La Cosecha is sponsoring Zumba, getting the community moving right in the center of the plaza. We bring out a professional Zumba instructor. We have the mic, and it's fun. And Delgado's vision is expanding. I want to add an arch over J Street that says Cesar Chavez Plaza Square Hospitality Zone, where this block, this square, along with all the businesses, the buildings, all the small businesses, the hotel, we all become one little association where we focus on making this plaza a vibrant place. But it can also be... Ernesto Delgado and the vision that he has for this area and really making it the epicenter of downtown Sacramento is extraordinary. I like the idea of activating the old city hall building. Maybe it's a, you know, Latino arts center, or maybe it's a Latino museum, or a Sacramento historical museum. A vision spearheaded by Delgado that's supported by strong community partnerships. We have community coming together and recognizing that this is a civic plaza that belongs to everyone and that it's capable of so much more. With Cesar Chavez himself still inspiring people today. Coming from a family of farm workers, um, I know that she was very instrumental in changing the working conditions for my father, for my mother. I'm just happy that we're represented here. It's such a beautiful space. Foster the spirit, que si se puede, that it can be done. And we hope that you carry the spirit, que si se puede, with you, not just during this Hispanic Heritage Month, but every day. From the team here at Fox 40 and our sister stations across the state who contributed, we thank you for watching. I'm Monica de Anda. Have a great night.